A seven-year tribulation. The dispensational position is that a seven-year period of tribulation is foretold of in Daniel's prophecy of 70 weeks, Daniel 9.24-27, namely the final week of the prophecy, which has been postponed until the end times, when it is referred to in Revelation in terms of two distinct halves of three and a half years. In this view, before, or according to some, before the end of the first half of the anticipated seven-year tribulation period, those who are then already Christian believers will be raptured from the earth by Christ, and during the time of tribulation, the whole nation of Israel will be brought to faith in Christ. The time of Jacob's trouble, described in Jeremiah 37, is popularly cited as support for the dispensational view that the tribulation period is meant for Jews, but not for existing Christians, to enter into and endure. The case has already been made in this book that Daniel's 70th week was completed three and a half years after Christ's crucifixion and that the prophecy was entirely fulfilled with the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Therefore, there is no reason to project Daniel's 70th week of seven years forward to make it coincide with the end-time events described in Revelation. Revelation referred to a single time period of three and a half years. Revelation itself did not mention any period of seven years. It referred to a single period of three and a half years which was expressed in various terms in several verses. 11.2 but the court which is without the temple leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles, and the holy city shall they tread under foot forty and two months. 11.3 And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days, clothed in sackcloth. 12.6 And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. 12.14 And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, from the face of the serpent. 13.5 And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. As the time periods in Daniel's prophecies are interpreted based on the year-for-a-day principle, and as it has already been demonstrated that Daniel's 70th week, i.e. final seven years, expired long ago, and is therefore not in our eschatological future, there is also no reason to view the three and a half years mentioned in Revelation as literal years. Nor is there any cause to interpret the three and a half years in Revelation as two periods, simply because that number of years was mentioned more than once. In fact, the five times it was mentioned all refer to the same period of time. As an added point of fact, as it may still be a sticking point for many who read from the classic translations of the New Testament, note that translations of Revelation 13.5 in the King James versions, American Standard Version, English Revised Version, and others, which state that the first beast will be given power to continue for 42 months, are incorrect. The Greek verb poiesai, Strong's number 4160, in the infinitive form meant to do, act, cause, not to continue, as some interpret as meaning that this measure of time is repeated. Revelation's years are not literal, but prophetic years for days just as in Daniel 9. Revelation should be approached as an independent prophecy, in the same way as Daniel's, applying the year-for-a-day principle to the time period mentioned in it. It then follows that the 1,260 prophetic days, i.e. 42 months, and time times and half a time, expressed in Revelation, should all be interpreted as one in the same period of 1,260 literal years. In Revelation and in Daniel, this same 1,260-year period was referred to several times. It represented the first of two periods of time when the Antichrist has both religious and political authority in the world that occurred during the course of the broader time frame of Great Tribulation. As has already been established here, Daniel's 70th week is not the period of years immediately prior to Christ's return. 
The tribulation is not seven years at all. Neither is it only 1,260 years. In fact, it is much longer than that, and its precise duration is not specified in Scripture. Based on a plain reading of Jesus' words quoted in Matthew 24 and Mark 13, and certain of the events he prophesied then that have occurred already, the phenomenon of ever-intensifying and ever-expanding Great Tribulation spans the entire period since shortly before Jerusalem was destroyed until his second coming. This is explained in further detail in the chapter, We Are Not Appointed to Wrath. The initial 1,260-year reign of the Antichrist, which has already transpired, and the subsequent period of its activity in the guise of the false prophet, the second beast, within which we are now living, is discussed in the next chapter.